in there anytime I want to. Every parent has that right. Yes. And what I do is I go to, I, I pick a class I'm going to go to this month, next month, different classes. I get there early and I watch him as he walks in. I watch the students as they, they come in. And when they see someone new there, they kind of straighten up. And of course, when my son walks through the door, he straightens right up. And I'll sit <laughs> yes. through and I'll sit in the back of the class and I will observe. The teachers appreciate, appreciate it. Mm -hmm. The principal, principal appreciates it. And other parents appreciate it. And now other parents are doing this. That's absolutely wonderful. That's wonderful. I'd like to know uh, what your thoughts are on this last um, vote at the school department recently? Well, I attended um, that committee meeting. I actually was outside protesting. Okay. Um, and, and, and again, you have to speak truth to the perceived power. You have to fight for what you believe in. Mm -hmm. You need to stand up for what you believe in. And, I, and I'll say this, you're looking at a brother who doesn't scratch where he doesn't itch, who doesn't itch where he doesn't scratch, and I can't be bought. I'm about, I am about the issues of the people, of all the peoples in Charlestown, in South Boston, in West Roxbury, in Dorchester, in Roxbury. We all have the same issues. Some are just greater than others, but we all have issues. Education, jobs, our seniors. We have the issues, we just have to address them. And we have to listen to the people, listen to their issues, and then have solutions. Now, you spoke about jobs. Let's get into that topic. Uh, tell us what your plans are around unemployment. Well, it's not fair, Lolita, that certain people, the unemployment rate in the city of Boston is 18%. It's not right that certain people's unemployment rate is 6%. Well, obviously, there is a great, great gap there. So we have to close that gap. So how do we close that gap? We have the 18%, we bring it down to 6%, like this 6% over here. Then we take that 6% and we bring it down. There's just in construction projects alone, Lolita, there's $4.4 billion worth of construction billion. going on. You $4.4 billion. And the Boston Residency Policy um, 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 Act that came about 30, something years ago with the help of um, City Councilor Chuck Turner, uh, Mel, Mel King, um, Senator Bruce Bowling, and my brother Fletcher, uh, you know, said that 50% of those jobs, 50% should be Boston residents. Mm -hmm. Again, folks that live in West Roxbury, Rosendale, Charlestown, South Boston, Mattapan, Jamaica Plain, um, Roxbury, and so on, you know, 50% should be Boston residents. 25% should be people of color. Now this is 30 years ago. 25% should be people of color. 10% should be women. Well, the city of Boston has changed. The landscape has changed. The US Census says that 54% uh, of the city of Boston are people of color. So already, first of all, the, 25, the 50, 25, 10 has not been adhered to. But now we're going to even have to revamp that because that 25% has now turned into 54%. Now there are some construction jobs that um, are um, exceeding the 50, 25, 10, and I applaud those for it. But we're talking over 200, we're talking about approximately about 200 projects that are going on. And, just, and if only one or two are in compliance and the rest are not, we don't even have enough compliance officers. I mean, if you look at the, at the state of Connecticut, they have less, const less construction going on, but they have nine to 11 compliance officers that go out and check and make sure that these jobs are, are, on, are in compliance. Here in the city of Boston, we only have three, and we have 200 wow. projects. That would kind of create some jobs right there. <laughs> that would definitely, <laughs> definitely. Now, when we speak about jobs, we also have a lot of uh, businesses um, that are minor, not minority, but owned by people of color. Well, How let, do you let, see? Let, the, let's just bring it back okay. to the construction okay. where we, we, we put people to work. Mm -hmm. You know, to be in construction or to be in the construction field, you're looking at, you know, $50 an hour. 
fifty dollars an hour. That's a lot of money. So okay. let's let's take and and fill those jobs up. Mm -hmm. We have people that are coming from Connecticut working, folks that are coming from Rhode Island, folks that are coming from Maine and New Hampshire. So the work the, the work is there. Yeah. So let's replace them because you know when they get paid, they're gonna take their money back to Connecticut, back to Rhode Island, mm -hmm. back to they're not gonna spend their money here in the city of Boston. So if we put people to work, mm -hmm. they feel good about themselves. They start spending money with local businesses. Now the local businesses start to thrive. You know what? I'm not exactly sure if I have four more minutes on this entire show or to break. We have three minutes. So we for need to, for, yeah, time is show. really going. Wow. So we need to get right into your, what your needs are. <laughs> well, let's, let's, let's. What your needs are. Uh, you have an event coming up Saturday this first, This Saturday. Right? Um, Would you tell us about that sure. first? Sure. Um, this Saturday at, um, <laughs> this Saturday, 310 Talbot Avenue. Okay. Um, we're definitely having one of our campaign strategy sessions, those that mm -hmm. are in, um, interested in becoming a volunteer and learn more about um, um, the campaign to elect Charles Clemens mm -hmm. for mayor, come on down. And um, this is a grassroots um, movement. It's not an election we're talking about. We're talking about a movement. We're going to discuss the timelines. April the 17th is when we all submit our paperwork, all okay. the candidates. Okay. April the 30th to May 30th, we have to get 3,000 signatures. Now, there's a catch to that. Okay. I know i got a few seconds left. <laughs> yes. So explain if, that if, catch If candidate to us. one gets your signature, mm -hmm. Lolita, and then I get your signature, and candidate one puts your paperwork in with your signature, then, my, then the signature you signed for me gets thrown out. Okay. So, so that's really important. Each candidate has to get 3,000 signatures, and then around the second week of June, we'll find out if we make it to the ballot. So it's important but, that I only sign for one candidate. Oh, absolutely. Okay, number one. And that candidate, mm -hmm. I pray, will be Charles Brother Clemens. Charles, yes. <laughs> <laughs> and um, now tell us what the next timeline is. Um, really after, quick, and your website information, well, after, too. After that, once everybody has met that criteria mm -hmm. of 3,000 signatures, then September the 24th is our primary, and then November the 6th is the election. Okay. Um, the website, charlesforboston.com. Okay. Again, charlesforboston.com. And you can email me at info. Um, at charlesforboston.com or call me at 617-334-4639. I look for hearing from you. I want to hear your issues. I want to address your issues. And I want to put your issues on the radar. So here we have it, folks. Charles for Mayor of Boston. And uh, check out that website. Again, that website is www.charlesforboston.com. Remember, if you sign uh, the paperwork after April 30th, is that? No, you sign the paperwork mm -hmm. between, the signatures are from April 30th to May 30th. Okay, you only sign one person's paperwork, people. <laughs> <laughs> it's important. Um, we want to thank you so much for <laughs> no, being on the People's you. Platform. No, thank you very much. And the staff here and the volunteers yes. here and the interns here are awesome, they fantastic, are. Are. great, and outstanding. Okay, and remember, unity builds a strong community. That's right. That's our platform. All, all day, every day. <laughs> so we'll see you again soon. Mm -hmm. Thanks for being with us.